In this example, we want to determine the intervals in which the function given here is increasing or decreasing. And then from there, we want to find the local maximum and minimum values of f. Okay, so that's going to be using the first derivative test. And then we're going to find the or determine the intervals in which the function is concave up or concave down. And from there, we can determine uh, the inflection points. Okay. So first thing is um, we need to find the critical numbers. Okay. So that means we need to take the derivative of our function. So we're going to have f prime of x equals to 4x cubed minus 100x. So just using the power rule for derivatives. So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 0. So we have 4x cubed minus 100x equals to 0. Okay, so we can go ahead and solve this. Uh, we can uh, go ahead and factor out a 4x. So we're going to have 4x times x squared minus 25 equals to 0. Okay, so that so this implies that we have 4x equal to 0 or x squared minus 25 is equal to 0. So from here we're going to get x equals to 0 or x equals to plus or minus 5. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and plot those on the number line. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so these are our, these are the critical numbers. Okay. All right, so we have x equals to zero. So we're going to put that there. We have negative five, and we'll put positive five there. Okay. So now from here we're going to pick. We need to, <clears throat> sorry, we need to choose a number from each of those, uh, from each section, okay? So from here, okay, you can choose minus 10. From here, I'm going to choose negative 1. From here, I'll choose 1. And from here, I'll choose 10, okay? So what we want to do is we want to take these values. So these are our test points. And we want to evaluate those at the derivative. Okay. All right. So we're going to have f prime of so we're going to have f prime of negative 10. Okay. That's going to give us uh, 4 times negative 10 cubed minus 100 times negative 10 okay so we're so again we're substituting the test points back into here okay into our first derivative okay so this is going to give us negative 3000 which is obviously less than zero okay so that means for that particular interval okay for any for any value for any value that we pick from minus infinity to negative 5 will also give us a negative value. So that means for this, that means the function is going to be decreasing on that particular interval. Okay. So I'm just going to put an arrow here and then indicating that's decreasing there. Okay. Uh, so the next test point is going to be f prime of minus 1. Okay, so we're going to have 4 times negative 1 cubed minus 100 times negative 1. This is going to give us a value of 96, and that is bigger than 0. So that means anything between minus 5 and 0 is going to, is where our function is going to be increasing. So I'm going to draw an arrow here to indicate that. Okay, so we're going to evaluate f prime at 1. So we're going to get 4 times 1 cubed minus 100 times 1. 
And so that's going to give us a value of minus 96, and that is less than 0. Okay, so that means the function is going to, is the function is decreasing between 0 and 5. Okay. The last test point is going to be 10, so we take f prime of 10. So we have 4 times 10 cubed minus 100 times 4. And so that's going to give us 3,000, which is bigger than 0. So that means the function is increasing on the interval from 5 to infinity. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move this down. Let's do it this way. Okay, so now we can summarize what we found here. Okay, so it's going to be for this function. Okay, so we have it's increasing. From minus 5 to 0, and then from 5 to infinity. Okay, and it's decreasing from minus infinity, okay, to negative 5, okay, and then it's also decreasing from 0 to 5. Okay. So when you write this, uh, when you write the results here for the, you know, for the sets, you always go from left to right. Okay. All right. So we have, so we now have, right? We have the, uh, we know the where the function is increasing and decreasing. Okay. We, all right. So next thing from there, uh, we can go ahead and apply the first derivative test. Okay. So this is, so this will tell us what our local maximum and minimum values are. Okay, so going back up here, okay, I'm just going to redraw this. Okay, we have, we had minus 5 here, okay, 0, 5, okay, and it was increasing. Oh, sorry. sorry, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and increasing. Okay, so again, just um, just copying the result that we got earlier. Okay, all right. So since the function is decreasing from minus infinity to negative five, and then increasing from minus five to zero, there's a there's a turning point there at negative five. So the function will be going down and then coming back up. Okay, so that means at this point there's a relative minimum. Okay. Since the function is increasing from minus 5 to 0 and then, zero, and then it's decreasing from 0 to 5, that means this is a relative maximum. Okay. And then for this point, since the function is decreasing from 0 to 5 and then increasing from 5 to infinity, this is a relative minimum. Okay. So again, that is using the first derivative test. Okay. All right. So we can summarize that. Okay. So we're going to have. Okay. So we have a relative minimum. Okay. This is. This is going to be, okay, I'm going to go ahead and write the coordinate for this, okay. So the relative minimum, okay, occurs in two locations, okay, the first one is at minus 5, okay, and so we're going to evaluate the function, okay, so to get the y value, we need to evaluate the function at minus 5, okay, so our function was up here, okay. So just recopy that here. 
Okay, so we're going to have f of negative 5. Okay, so just substituting in negative 5 for x. So this is going to give us minus 620. And for 5, okay, for the other minimum, relative minimum, we have, uh, it occurred at 5, okay. So for negative 5, our function, the y value was minus 620, okay. And then let's go ahead and evaluate the function at 5. So that's going to give us also minus 620. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, we have a relative minimum also at five and negative 620. So we also had a relative maximum at occurring at x equals to zero. Okay, so f of zero. Okay, this is just going to be when you plug zero in for x. So you're going to get zero to the fourth minus fifty times zero squared plus five. So that's going to give us five. Okay. Okay, so we have relative max. Okay, so the relative max was at occurring at zero, and the corresponding y value was five. Okay, all right. Okay, so we have the coordinates here. Okay, so the way you interpret this is that we have the function. So the function has a relative min occurring at x equals negative five. That relative min, the value of that relative min is this. Okay. It's referring to the y value, okay? And so both of these, at x equals to negative five and positive five, they both have a relative min of negative, uh, negative 620, okay? And then we have a relative max occurring at x equals zero, and that relative max is the value of five, okay? All right. All right, so then let's go on to uh, the next part, which is asking for Okay, determine the intervals in which the function is concave up or concave down. So for that, we need the uh, we need to calculate the second derivative. Okay, so we have the first derivative up here, which was four x cubed minus one hundred x. Okay, we had okay. So now we can go ahead and take the second derivative with respect to x. So we're going to get 12x squared minus 100. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 0. Okay. So set the second derivative equal to 0. Okay, so we have 12x squared minus 100 equals to zero. So we can go ahead and factor out a four. Okay, so we have four times three x squared minus 25 equals to zero. So this implies that we have three x squared minus 25 equals to zero. So this is going to give us x squared equals to 25 thirds so this implies that we have plus or minus 5 over root 3. Okay, so we take the square root of both sides to isolate x. Okay. And uh, this is the same as 
if we rationalize this, uh, this is going to be plus or minus 5 root 3 over 3. Okay, so we get that just by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of 3. Okay, okay so then from here, uh, we're going to plot these on the number line. Okay, so we have minus 5 root 3 over 3, and here we have minus 5, sorry, positive 5 root 3 over 3, okay? All right, so let's see. So we need to, again, here we need to pick some test points, okay? So I'm going to choose negative 5 because I know that negative 5 is smaller than minus 5 root 3 over 3. And then again, we can pick, you know, we can pick any number in that particular interval. Here, just choose something easy like 0. And then here we can choose positive 5. Okay. So we're going to take these test points and plug them back into the second derivative. Okay. All right, so we have, okay, so we're going to have f prime of negative 5. So we plug them back into here. Okay, so we have f double prime of negative 5. That's going to give us 12 times negative 5 squared minus 100. And that's going to give us a value of 200, which is bigger than zero. So that's okay. So that tells us that the function for this given function, it's going to be concave up from minus infinity to minus five root three over three. Okay. All right. So I'm going to indicate that just by drawing this, just putting a concave up symbol. All right. So then we're going to plug in f prime of 0. So that's going to give us 12 times 0 squared. Okay, minus 100. So this is going to give us negative 100, which is less than 0. So that means for this function, it's going to be concave up between the values of minus 5 root 3 and positive 5 root 3 over 3. Okay. So concave up, or actually it's less than 0, so it's going to be actually, sorry, concave down. Okay. So concave down between minus 5 root 3 over 3 and 5 root 3 over 3. Okay. And then we have the last point, which is 5. So we're going to get 12 times 5 squared minus 100, that's going to give us 200. Okay, and this is going to be bigger than 0. So that tells us this is going to be concave up from my, sorry, concave up from 5 root 3 over 3 to infinity. Okay, so we can summarize that. down. Okay. All right, so concave up. Okay, so this function is going to be concave up from minus infinity to minus 5 root 3 over 3. And from 5 root 3 over 3 to infinity. And it's concave down between minus 5 root 3 over 3 and positive 5 root 3 over 3. Okay. All right. So again, when you're writing out these intervals, always go from left to right.
Okay, so from here, uh, we can get the inflection points. Okay. So just redrawing what, what we got earlier. So we had minus 5 root 3 over 3 and positive 5 root 3 over 3. Okay. So since we had uh, this function was concave up on this part of the interval and it was concave down between minus 5 root 3 over 3 and positive 5 root 3 over 3. Okay. And then it was concave up here on this particular interval. Okay. All right. And again, I should, okay, I should always put, indicate that that's minus and plus here. But I assume that, you know, the student that's taking calculus should know this already. Okay, but just in case. All right. Okay. All right, so from here, okay, so remember the inflection point is where the concavity is changing. Okay. All right, so at this point, right, this is, right, the function is going from concave up to concave down. So we have an inflection point here, and we also have another one here. Okay, since the function is going, is concave down, and then it's, and then it goes concave up. Okay, so there's two inflection points here. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the coordinates for that. Okay, so this is these are where the, again these are where the inflection points occur. So we want to find out the uh, the y values. So we just plug it back into the original function. Okay, so we're going to have our original function was oops, half of x equals to x to the fourth minus 50 x squared plus 5. Okay, so evaluating 5 root 3 over 3. Okay, we have 5 root 3 over 3 to the power 4 minus 50 times 5 root 3 over 3 squared plus 5. Okay, so this is going to give us minus 620. Okay. Oh, actually, no, sorry, that's not right. Actually, this is going to give us, uh, we're going to get, let's see, let me do this on the next line. Uh, so we're going to get uh, 56.25 over 81 minus 50 times 75 over 9 plus 5. Okay, and this is going to give us minus 3,080 over 9. Okay, so that's the y value for the first, uh, or for the uh, positive value of 5 root 3 over 3. Okay. All right, so if we evaluate the second point, the second inflection point, we have minus 5 root 3 over 3. Okay, so we're going to have minus 5 root 3 over 3 minus 50 times minus 5 root 3 over 3 squared plus 5. Okay. So if we can be a little clever here, okay, because the function that we have, if you notice, this is an even function. Okay. And if I right, recall, right, if you put in, if you evaluate this function at negative x, then you end up getting the same function back. Okay. So that's the algebraic test to uh, determine whether a function is even. Okay. So using this, so using this, we we, we know that because this function is even, 
and we evaluate the function at 5 fruit 3 over 3, right? And because this function is even, which means it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, that means for the function evaluate at minus 5 root 3 over 3 will also give us the same value, okay? So we're going to get minus 30, 80 over 9. Okay, so, uh, all right, so we have everything here. Okay, so, so our inflection points, okay, okay, for the coordinates, okay, we can write like this. We have plus or minus five root three, okay, and they both have the same y value. And again, the reason is because this function is even. Okay, so that's the coordinates for for the inflection points. Okay. All right. So with this, um, you can easily get this. Uh, take the data from here. Take the information from here, and come up with a uh, a sketch of what this function looks like. Okay. All right, so again, uh, we used uh, determine the intervals on which the functions increase or decreasing. We take the derivative, set it equal to zero. We plot those on the number line, and then we pick test points from each interval, and you plug those test points back into the first derivative, okay? And then from there, you can determine, using the first derivative test, you can determine whether that turning point is a relative minimum or maximum, okay? So if it's if the function is going to decrease, then increase. That means that corresponding turning point will be a minimum. If the function is increasing, then decreasing, then that turning point will be a relative maximum. Okay. Uh, for concavity, you use the second derivative. So you take the derivative of the first derivative, set it equal to zero. And again, we can you pick a point from each interval and then put those back into the second derivative. If it's positive, that means it's going to be concave up for that particular interval. Okay, if it's negative, it's going to be concave down on that particular interval. Okay, and then from there you can determine the inflection points, and those are where the concavity changes. Okay, all right. 